Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring into the comment video. We're going to be discussing a rumor concerning AMD's next line of APUs. Now, I would like to reiterate rumor. This is not confirmation or anything like that, but they would appear, at least according to this leaked slide, to be featuring 16 cores, 16 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory and DDR4 support. I'd love to include the slide in the video, but just because of YouTube and copyright crap, I can't really do that. So there's a link in the video description if you want to go and check it out. But anyway, let's jump right in, shall we? So obviously the 16 gigabytes of HBM is going to be for the integrated GPU, which is supposedly going to be based on the Greenland uh, GCN architecture. Now, the CPU's core situation is going to be that it's going to be utilizing AMD's Zen. So Zen, for those of you who don't know, is coming out next year. And it's going to be supposedly on a 14nm process. Obviously support DDR4 because, well, it's a future CPU, so it bloody well should. And take up to about 95 watts of TDP, obviously depending on the configuration and so on and so forth. Giving you a brief overview, the main difference with Zen is we're supposedly going to be seeing a rather large jump in performance. One of those reasons is that it's going to be supporting multi-threading, which is much more like how Intel handles things. So currently, it's handling cluster multi-threading. Um, that would be the bulldozer range of CPUs. But it wants to switch to simultaneous multi-threading, also known as SMT, which is, as I said, more like, say, how Intel do, do things with pretty much any of their recent CPUs. So clustered multi-threading, just to give you an idea, an indication, was in, uh, AMD thought to themselves, hey, we want to reduce power consumption, and we also want to reduce the die space consumption, but we want to improve performance. So what they did is that they added a couple of integer pipelines, but it just never really worked out quite how AMD had hoped. Theoretically, the unified front end should have issued instructions to two, to two separate integer pipelines, but it just it just didn't really work. And effectively, they lost up to 20% performance. So they're basically going back somewhat to the drawing board. But switching things to a more generic and overview of the APU, as you probably guessed when my you know introduction first started to roll, you probably got the feeling, hey, this, this thing's not going to be you know two pennies, and it's obviously not aimed at the average user. From what we can tell, it's going to be focusing on high-end servers um, or, for example, scientific computing and so on because the DDR4 memory it has up to four channels and it is supposedly going to support up to um, 1,024 gigabytes of memory. That's a lot of RAM. That's like a terabyte of memories. That's many memories. But supposedly, we're also going to be seeing 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache. So obviously, that's uh, 8 megabytes total um, for level 2. Uh, that's 512 uh, KB per core, and there's 16 cores on this uh, CPU, and 32 megabytes of shared level 3. Things become a little bit more curious when we're dealing with the rest of the specifications. Because, supposedly, this, this APU is going to have a new shiny connection to the GPU. The, the purpose here is to actually reduce latency and it's going to have this new communications channel known as coherent fabric. The purpose behind this is to reduce, as I said, the associated latency of the PCIe connection. It does have PCIe for a discrete GPU, so for example if you wanted to in a year's time or maybe you know if you're running scientific computing you could add an R9390X or whatever or maybe more likely a Fire Pro range of uh, GPUs, to be totally honest, if you're going scientific, but what have you. Um, so this is really aimed at HSA, um, which obviously AMD have wanted to get into for some time now. Um, you know, it, they believe it's the next generation. So the big question is, with the target date of some point next year, I mean, that could be 
December 31st, 2016 for all we know, but let's assume some point mid to late next year. Is it actually feasible for AMD to do this? Because 16 gigabytes of HBM alone isn't small. It's it's quite an, you know it's quite a feat to be able to put all this bloody stuff together. And obviously this could be a couple of issues. It could be TDP problems. It could be the amount of actual well parts that they can even manufacture. For example, they might have a high fault level um, because there are so many bloody moving parts to this thing. That might not be necessarily a bad thing. Of after all, that's where speed and part binning come into uh, to come into play. So they can say release another part that has a fewer GCN units enabled, or another part which has a fewer CPU cores, or maybe fewer GCN units enabled, and so on. Reading through the specifications of this, where it's obviously half double precision, you're looking at various security uh, security boot. Um, and a crypto co-processing so yes it is obviously for not really a desktop use and it will be rather expensive will they be able to manufacture it well technically there's nothing there that they couldn't do it's just whether it's feasible for them to do in other words yes they could technically create it but would it be feasible for them to create it on a large scale possibly in their leaked roadmaps, there are links to that as well. It's in, directly embedded, actually, in the article. You can see that Intel have been uh, sorry, AMD have been trying to do this for some time. They clearly have something in mind for 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19 to 20, and each one is like a new generation. They're basically trying to switch to high-end performance Hawaii. Um, and then to next generation and next generation and next generation and um, this is just how their plans are they've, they've basically got plans for the next 10 years so in that respect while there are some things that definitely might be a bit of a head scratcher for example the memory configuration up to 3200 megahertz on servers maybe yeah, and then you've got other little bits and bobs like six as i've mentioned a couple of times now 16 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory we know of course amd are going high bit bandwidth memory for example the r9 390x supposedly supports base 4 and 8 gigabytes but that's a lot different to 16 gigabytes with also additional cpu cores with all of the associated gubbins, which of course are going to have to be also integrated, for example, the various memory controllers that interconnects between them and so on. So even if they're going like the 2.5 die and spreading it out, it's going to be gargantuan. I'm not saying they can't do it. It would be rather interesting to see how it's all going to be put together. But if it does work, what does it actually mean for us as desktop users? Well, probably nothing initially, but... The main exciting thing for me, to be totally honest, is probably the whole Zen architecture. A couple of reasons. One, we need a rival for to Intel because Intel have just been really slow. Yes, I know they do have some stuff in the in the future, but let's face it, if AMD had actually released the CPU back when Sandy Bridge was released, which I think was 2011, I'm probably terribly wrong, but whatever. Um, and they'd released one a couple of months later that absolutely rocked. It was, I don't know, 10, 15 percent faster or more efficient or what have you than Sandy Bridge. Intel would have done something pretty drastic rather than these very, to be totally honest, conservative improvements we've had. I mean, I did upgrade from Sandy to Haswell, and I did so not necessarily because, you know, I was unhappy with Sandy Bridge, it was just because I was trying to change my processor on my main rig to an i7 and so I figured well you know what by the time I've actually bought a new CPU done all the other bits and bobs I'm gonna have to basically disassemble half my system anyway so because my CPU caller to install it you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and buy a new uh, motherboard and I want to get extra RAM as well so I just decided to go that route was it a massive upgrade well not really in terms of IPC and upwards one core if you're running them at the same clock speed and as it turns out I didn't get the best clocking as well uh, maybe if I went with a more 
aggressive cooling solution. I'm thinking about maybe going high-end water or something, but it's probably not really worth it with this late into the platform cycle anyway. I'll probably just wait, to be honest, and then grab and jump onto the next platform. So I didn't really get the best clock uh, clocking has one. I've tried a couple of times to get it to a decent clock speed. I can get it there, but I'm just not happy with the temperatures, so I kind of just backed off. My Sandy Bridge, on the other hand, hit 4.5, 4.6 without any real trouble. That was on a 2500K. Anyway, I'm completely and utterly off point. Getting back to the point, if Intel had actually had some really good pressure from Intel, from AMD, it would have helped things along a lot. And this was, of course, what happened back in the Athlon 64 era, or even the original Athlon XP era. Moving on from the CPU side of things, assuming once again that this is all true, from the gaming perspective and the APU, it's also quite interesting because the built-in GPU, obviously on the APU, it might not have the number of shaders that, that say, the R9-390X is rumoured to have, which is like 4,096, but it will still be fairly powerful, and it will be powerful enough to where you can run a game at 1080p, most likely anyway, without too much trouble. Aside from that, just with the way that AMD are hoping that the whole architecture is going to work, those cores, of course, will work quite nicely. The ones on the APU will work quite nicely in conjunction with a discrete GPU. So in short, you can build a really powerful crossfire type of rig without too much difficulty. Once again, to reiterate how accurate any of this information is, you and I can only guess. I'm really hoping it's fairly accurate, however. Because if it is, it's it's going to be quite exciting. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.